today I would like to ask Kalina uh, from the other side of the, the from my uh, my phone to to pray for us today as we open, please. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, that we could um pray to you. Thank you that we could do Zoom. And please bless us as we're going to do our evening prayer in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. <laughs> nice filter. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing around, but he doesn't want to. to... <laughs> thank you, Alina. Thank you. Thank you. That's better, I think. Yes. And I will come see you tonight. Thank you. <laughs> now it is great. It is great. <laughs> we thank God for the opportunity that He's given us to, to, to meet together again. Yes. Uh, today, as we already discussed, we are going to uh, continue our normal process. Uh, let me put it down here. Where has it gone? Technology. <laughs> Where are you? Okay, this year. Hello. Okay. That is strange. Is it not working? <laughs> no, it is minimizing. So it is not allowing me to, to see it, but now I am going to share it so we can see it as well. Okay. Hey, thank you. So um, today we will be talking about Church of the Living God. Uh, if we remember very well what we discussed last time, it was talking about the function and the materials that we can uh, get from the, the, the church manual. And we said that we can um, have access to the, the, let me say, the church manual, and I think I shared on the group already, so you can also read with me, and I am skipping some of them, like it is defining some kind of uh, terms, what is a church, what is a conference, a mission, section, we will be talking about that one later on, that is why I'm skipping about it, for now, what is a pastor, what is a minister, and, and, and the abbreviations and the scriptures. But today it is talking about the church of living God. So uh, since we have Sunai with us, may I request you sister to read it first, please. Okay. Up until uh, all three of the paragraphs. Um, I, I think let us go up to fellow also with their, their Lord for now, so that we can process one by one. Okay, no problem. All right. Scripture uses various expressions to describe the church, such as the church of God, Acts 20, verse 28, the body of Christ, Ephesians 4, verse 12, and the church of the living God, 1 Timothy 3, verse 15. To belong to the church of God is a unique and soul-satisfying privilege. It is God's purpose to gather out a people from the far corners of the earth to bind them into one body, the body of Christ, of which he is the living head. All who are children of God in Christ Jesus are members of this body. And in this relationship, they may enjoy fellowship with each other and fellowship also with the Lord. Yes, okay. thank you very much. Thank you very much. We, we can see here several, uh, uh, let me just move this here so I can see you as well. Yes, we can see here several terms used to, 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 to name the church. We can see, for example, a church of God, the body of Christ, and the church of the living God. When we uh, look at each name, it has a context on its own, and when uh, God is calling it a church of God, then it has its own context. When it is calling, when he is calling it as the body of Christ, he, it, it has its own context. 
And when he, he is calling it the church of the living God, it has also its own context. When we look at the context, for example, to explain to you what I am talking about, church is a word that has been taken from a word uh, that means assembly. And that is why when you look at a lot of churches, they call themselves assembly of God, because assembly and church is exactly the same. And when God is calling the assembly, he's calling each family to be together and to, um, to, to, to go in one place where they worship God and they, they practice the faith that they believe regarding what God is talking inside of the Bible. When we talk about the body of Christ as well, you know very well that the body has functions as members. And that is why when we go in our church, we call ourselves members of the church or members of the body of Christ. And as a member, you know very well that we have various functionalities, like the head will be uh, working differently with the hand. The hand will be working differently from the feet. The feet will work differently from the trunk itself. And, and that is why we cannot at the same time be the, the eyes of the church. Otherwise, the church will be uh, uh, not able to speak. Or we cannot be the mouth of the church at the same time. Otherwise, the church will be blind. So the functionalities of the body will tell to us exactly that we are different, but we complete each other. And, 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 and that completion as you joined the same of the Adventist church, uh, the Judah and Sunai, you need to discover with uh, your relationship with God, what would be my position in this church, in the body, so that I can be useful to God in making the body working and functioning. And that is why we need to have that close relationship, as it says here in, in, inside of this list here, the, 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 the relationship, first of all, between us. Because mm -hmm. as a body, you never saw a hand going and flying somewhere without the trunk of a body there. <laughs> It's, it's a dead, it's not possible at all. So for you to function, you have to be linked with the main body, which is the church itself. And we are working together. Like, uh, well, like we say in Madagascar, if my, my hands are painful, my mouth will be blowing on it so that it can, it can, it can, it, it can reduce the pain. And if my mouth is painful, it is my hand that will be uh, uh, what I, I don't know the, the, the English term that we can use, but it will reduce the, 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 the pain on it. So we always depend on each other. And that is why we fellowship each other. But following, uh, fellowship between each other is not enough because we have to fellowship with our Lord, our God as well. And that is one of the main purpose because God is speaking to his church. And, and, and uh, I always tend to ask people, do you believe that Jesus is coming for you? So nice. Yes. <laughs> do you believe? Yes. Okay, Judah, do wait. you believe? <laughs> yes, I do believe. <laughs> okay, thank yeah, you very we much. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. But that question, I am going to deceive you today, to uh, disappoint you instead of deceiving. Jesus is not coming for you. He is not coming for me. Jesus oh. is coming for his church. And that is why when we look in the book of, 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 of and I think it is good for me to open it so that we can continue what we study as well. When we look at in the book of Revelation, and I am going to open it and, and, and start a new share of this book. In Revelation uh, chapter 21 and the verse 1, look at what it says here. All things made new. 
Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. That is what it says here. No more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for the husband. And this is powerful what it says here that it is talking of a bride adorned for her husband, which means then that Jesus is coming for his bride, which is the church it's, uh, itself. And it is not talking about a person here. It is not talking about the country here. It is not talking of a tongue here. He is talking about a person that is his church. And that is why when we want to be able to meet with Jesus, we surely need to make sure that we belong to that church that he beloves so much. So that when we meet with him, he will meet with us through his church, which is his uh, bride, as we can see on, on, on the screen. And that is why the Bible is explaining us when we look at uh, back to the, the sharing again that we have said here. He said that we belong to the body of Christ. And in the relationship we have with each other and with God, then Jesus will meet with us in this uh, um, uh, context that we can see. Uh, dear Judah, would you like to continue until the end? The, the Bible uses the word until without blemish. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Bible uses the word church in at least two senses. A general sense applying to the church in all the world. Matthew 16 verse 28. 18. Oh, verse 18, sorry. And 1 Corinthians 12 verse 28. Mm -hmm. And a particular sense applying to the church in a city or a province, such as to those at Rome. Romans 1 verse 6 and 7. Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2. Uh, and it is talking is, of uh, uh, the first church that we can see here is Rome. The second one is Corinth. Wow. Oh, I the Thessalonians. <laughs> the third one is Galatia, Asia, Syria, Cilicia. It is. It is talking about those those churches. Yes, oh, wow. I understand. Okay. okay. Christ being the head of the church and its living Lord as a deep love for the members of his body. In the church, he is to be glorified. Ephesians 3 verse 21. Through the church, he will reveal the manifold wisdom of God. Ephesians 3 verse 10. Day by day, he nourishes the church. Ephesians 5 verse 29. And his longing desire is to make of it a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Exactly. Ephesians 5 verse 27. Thank you so much, Judah. Can you see why in this context it is using of a she? Can you see in this verse in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27? It is talking mm. of a she because mm. we as a church is the bride of Christ. And yeah. that is why uh, even in wedding, the marriage is so sacred because it represents our relationship with Jesus. And that is why we cannot have a relationship with a lady or with a man before we are married because we represent um, the relationship of the church with Jesus. And uh, it says then that as a fiancé or as the bride of Christ, bride to be of Christ, we should remain holy and without blemish. That is what it explains here, which means then that we need to keep ourselves virgin. Unfortunately, that word is no longer um, 
having having a sense or let me say people are, are taking a, a joke now they are not taking it seriously anymore but the, the deep relationship we have as a church as a, a wed uh, as a husband and wife is representing jesus himself as we can say just um if you may give me just one second please uh no just problem. A second. thank you i'm coming back sorry there is a, a second meeting happening with my mother-in-law <laughs> no yes yeah so as we can see from the the the, the the lesson that we can uh, uh, review in this uh, context here. Um, we see then that Jesus is really looking for his bride to be, which is the church. And that is why we cannot save ourselves. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, Michael. We are glad to have you among Hello. us today. Hello. I think he can unmute himself. Yes, I can. Yes. Hi, guys. Yes. Hello, 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 Michael. It's glad. It's good to, to see you among us here. Yes. Thanks. We, we already went ahead of you, but what we, I, I will be a little bit uh, summarizing what we discussed. We were talking about the Church of the Living God, as you <laughs> can see on the screen. And as a Church of the Living God, we have several names we can see here. Uh, that is given to the church, like the church of God, the body of Christ, and the, the church of the living God. And it depends on the context where they are being used. In the, 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 the reading that Sunai and Judah already read here, we learned as well that as a body of Christ, we are to fellowship each other, and we are also to fellowship with God himself, which is the ultimate one. When uh, uh, before I move on, as I say that, when you fellowship with each other, the relationship is, is horizontal because I fellowship with Michael and I fellowship with Judah. And when you go to the church, the relationship or the fellowship that we have is horizontal. But when I fellowship with God, then that fellowship is vertical as you can see here. When you combine both of them, what do you have at the, at the end, uh, at the end of this fellowship? What do you see? The cross. The cross, exactly. And, and my question to you is, if you fellowship and you are together because of this path, if I, 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 I tell to you as well that uh, the, the Ten Commandments of the same. I fellowship with God through the first to the third commandment to tell to me that I shall not have any other God. The second one is I shall not worship anything else than God. The third one is I shall not pronounce in vain his name. That is fellowshipping with God. And then the last uh, five um, uh, commandments or tell, telling about my fellowship with my, my neighborhood when I, my parents are to be uh, respected because they are my neighborhood as well. I shall not kill. I shall not commit adultery. I shall not lie. I shall not also uh, um, uh, go against any kind of uh, um, testimony that will be making, putting me lying. And I shall not even, uh, as it is said at the end, which is not even visible to us, uh, have some desire that is beyond what is uh, um, I should have. And, and the, way, the word English word, I think, is to convey, if, if, I, if I remember very well. And covet. When, covet. Covet, covet. Yes, thank covet. you very much. I shall not covet even. And when you look at, 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 at the approach, it is showing exactly the same aspect, like fellowshipping, with uh, among us is horizontal and fellowshipping with God is vertical. But when you combine both of them, don't you see that what makes the two, um, the two, uh, let me structure in place is something in the middle. What can make the cross a cross? Uh, Jesus. 
Yes, Jesus. But when we use to 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 uh, what we say plank or to 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 wood like this one, what makes it together in reality? What do you use to combine the plank into uh, together? A not nail. You say a nail. Nail, exactly. <laughs> so the nail that we can see that makes it combined together is the Sabbath day. Because the beauty of the Sabbath day is on Sabbath, you can fellowship each other. And on Sabbath, you can fellowship with your Lord, the God, your Lord. And that is why Satan is trying to damage the Sabbath and changing it into another day. Because if he arrives to do that, then when you remove the nail, will there be a cross? No. No. And God. that is why the Sabbath, as you, you study it, has more sense than you, you ever think. And God is using it as the nail to connect all of us together. And during the Sabbath day, that is why you cannot remain home on the Sabbath day, except in places where there is no church. But when you go, can go to church, we need to fellowship each other because through that way, we, we, we accomplish the cross of Jesus by, by, by doing so. So as we have learned here as well, the church can be used as a global church or also as a, a, a specific church, as it is said in the Bible, in Rome, in Corinth, in, in Thessalonica, Galatia, Asia, Syria, and Sicilia, those are churches where you can see uh, the, the apostles were, were, were visiting. And it says here as well that Christ uh, is the head of the church and he is living Lord of the church. And what we can see as well is he will be glorified through the church. And he is the one who is nourishing the church. And he is the one as well that is making the church a glorious church. And the reason of the glorious church, as it says, is for us to become bl without blemish and holy. And I, 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 as I explained to Chuta and Sunai as well, the, 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 the word of God is using she to explain that the church is the bride of Christ and Christ himself is the groom, which is meaning to us then that Jesus is not coming back for you and I and me. He is coming back for the church. So for you to be ready to meet with your Jesus, you, you'd rather belong to a church. And that is why when you don't go to church, there was a time when I was, my became, uh, um, I was convinced with this, this truth. Six months, I never went to any church, not at all. And I felt the gap that I thought that I can just remain at home and study the Bible, and that was enough. But when I joined the church, I saw myself growing because fellowshipping and the church is there to help us to grow. And exactly as I said, you cannot see the hand like waving uh, alone like this one without the body. If that hand is remaining that way, it will die. So it is very important, the need of the church for our life. Do you have any comments regarding our reading of today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> okay. But it is Mike? very mm -hmm. interesting, sorry, <laughs> to hear about the, um, the, the nail is the Sabbath and to see how it, it meets together. I think that's very awesome. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. We praise God. It is wonderful. Uh, you, God is revealing to you a lot of things, a lot. And, and next time also, I will show you as well the same, the same approach and the same analogy that Jesus is teaching us. But, but remember, we will have an eternity to learn about our God. You will never stop to be amazed with him. And, and, and that is why there is, you are granted an eternity not to enjoy 
uh, uh, eternal life only, but also to enjoy knowing your God. And you need an eternity to know him. And that is the beauty of learning. But when we learn a small thing on earth, that is just the partial part of what is knowing God. But uh, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Now we are going to, to, to our second part uh, of uh, the study, which is talking about um, what we say, um, the cost of, of, of um, the cost of, um, where was it again? Let me copy it, sorry. Uh-huh. Just, just a I comment. Think. Yes, my yeah. brother. No, you forgot about me. Daniel, come. Just a second. Mm -hmm. Is he talking to us? Uh, no, I just, I just had Mark talking here, um, so. The, the microphone is very powerful, so it picks it up. Sorry, so what I wanted to say is that uh, I agree mm -hmm. fully. You know, you can only grow to a certain limit being alone. Mm -hmm. And that, that doesn't mean that you need to, let's say you can only grow for six months alone, just as an example. Mm -hmm. And after that, you only need the church, you know, mm -hmm. to grow. Um, there, it, there gets a, it gets to a point where one reaches, where one has to go to church as well. To grow with others but also then what happens is you continue to grow grow on your own you know mm -hmm. but if and this has been my experience if you if you separate and you willfully choose to not be part of a church this has been my experience mm -hmm. the amount of growth that you grow being alone does not um continue it gets to a certain point and you stop growing hmm. So, so yes, so after a certain point, which I think is not very long, you need to start fellowshipping with others. You need to start attending church. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, eventually you look, you will continue growing on your own. I'm just recapping for what I was saying for you don't know, today. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. So just a distraction so yeah so basically that that's how it is man because you can't swing from one extreme to say no i should just be on my own study the bible and pray on my own and stay away from the world and from the church and then also the other extreme no nah, like i can't do this on my own i should just uh i should just continue like going to church and because both is necessary ingredients so this is what i'm saying and i'm also saying that one can't swing to either of the extreme where you say just one or the other so both true. needs to be in place yeah mm -hmm. sorry for sorry for all the distractions no it's fine, no, it's fine. so true um michael in fact when i when i traveled for the very first time in south africa uh in 2012 and i went back home uh i remember very well there was a big um poster at the airport and this is what it says when you go down to that ale. It says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And that is, that is really powerful, extremely powerful to tell that sometimes if you need to go fast, go alone. But if you really re reach that, that end or that mean or that place where, where you desire to to reach and, and succeed in it, you have to go together with someone. And that is the beauty of, of why God said to Adam, it is not good that the man is alone because he knew exactly if he wants to, to go far and in, in the relationship and in life, he has to be with someone and cannot be alone in life. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, now we are going to move to the the cost of dis uh, discipleship. Uh, I think we will be ending with this one today. So uh, any of you would like to, to, to read us, uh, read the, 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 the one on the screen, please. You may unmute and you can read. Well. Um, I'll, I'll try <laughs> to read, my, my screen is, is it bugging blurred? out. Yeah, it's blurring. Yeah, but, yes, but it's from our side. 
My computer oh. is. Let me everything let is me blurry share, on my let screen. Let me share it on the discipleship as well, and I think you can read from over there. Okay. Okay, let's try that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it is there now. Thank you. Once okay. welcome. Mm -hmm. And while our relationship with Jesus brings us great joy, some of Christ's strongest statements emp emphasizes the cost of following him and of being his disciple. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew 16, verse 24 and 25. Mm -hmm. Whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Luke 14, verse 33. You can according continue, my brother. According to Jesus, discipleship involves self-denial and sacrifice. It is not for those seeking popularity or selfish pursuits. Jesus said that the gate is narrow and the way difficult for those who follow him see matthew 7 verse 14 he reminds us if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you john 15 verse 18 the true disciple will face opposition for standing out from the crowd thank you so much what a wonderful way i remember we already started to 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 address this part last time but yes. we didn't finish it and the second part is where I would like us to focus today, which, which is good because when you start to join a church, you think you will join Jerusalem. You think you will join paradise, but that is not what, what the Bible is explaining us. That when you come into the church, life is not always made of roses. There are some times where you will be uh, facing thorns and it is difficult. And that is as well what I would like to tell to you. Michael, Judah, Sunai, the people in the church are not saying all saints and perfect. We are being transformed as we join the church. But there are some times where you face difficulties with some people in the church. And it can happen that you will be uh, persecuted by your own family. That is why it says here you need the sacrifice. But sometimes it's the, the, the problem is not from your own family or your old friends. Sometimes it is even within the new church that you join. It can be even pioneer seven of the Adventist church that can be having a problem with you, someone in the church. It can be even myself that can have a problem with you. But we need to remember something very well. The church is like an hospital. The church is like a hospital. And each and every one of us are coming to that church to be for one very single purpose, to be healed. And Jesus is the only doctor in the church. So when you join the church, you cannot look at the wound that Siri has. Or Siri cannot look at the wound that Michael has. Or I cannot look at the, car, the, 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 the illness that Sunai has. Each and every one of us are having different and various illnesses that Jesus needs to heal. And that is why when you go in the hospital, you don't go there to find that, that you shall be the only one who is sick and others shall be well. Instead, all of us are, are sick. And sometimes you face challenges where people are very harsh to you in the church. Some people are very difficult to you yet in the church, but you cannot look unto those people. And that is why I would like us to, uh, to read exactly what the Apostle Paul said in, 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 in the book of Hebrew. If you may read for me as well in Hebrew 12, please. On the screen. Uh, I don't know if Michael is with us. 
Hebrew 12. Michael is with us. Yes, uh, Hebrew 12, 1 and 2, please. Would you please read it? Sure, these are such great, great verses. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thank you so much, my brother. Indeed, a beautiful verse. In the fact that it is summarizing exactly the experience that we shall face in the church. First of all, when we look at this verse, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded, the first thing that you need to be aware of, first of all, is that you are never alone. The surrounding that you have is there is a cloud of witnesses. The cloud of witnesses can be the angels of God, can be the angels of Satan. It can be also the neighborhood, the community, the church itself, or the family that you have. There are a cloud of witnesses looking unto you and your life as you give your life to Jesus. And it says, we need to lay aside every weight, which means, which means then that the first thing that you need to do when you go in the church is to remove anything that makes you overweighted, remove anything that, you, that drags you to, uh, to go to, to the, 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 let me say, the prize that you are, when you are meant to reach, to the destination that you are meant to reach, to go, as you can see as well. So it says, lay aside. And then the second part is, and the sin which you so easily ensnares us, the sin which so easily ensnares us, we remove the weight, any burden that is, is not good for us. And second thing is remove yourself or remove yourself from the uh, place where you can be exposing yourself to uh, an old sin and where you, you can very easily fall onto it. And then it says, let us run. It is not enough then that we, we, we lay aside. We need to, the, the second verb of action that we need to have here is to run. But the running is not enough. There is also an adjective that is qualifying the way that we shall run. And the adjective that we can see here is you need to be running with endurance, which means then that there is a pain there. There is a sacrifice that you have to do. There is a lot of struggle that you have to, to, to go through until the, the final uh, location is reached, but you have to run and run and run. And it says, as you run now, there is an action that you need to do as well. You need to look. And looking is not looking on anything. It is looking on the prize. And the prize is none other than Jesus himself. So when you look at your, your, your race, don't look at Siri, because Siri can deceive you. Don't look at Michael. Don't look at Judah. Don't look even Sunai. Don't look at Judah. And Judah, don't look at Sunai, because any one of us can be used by the enemy to discourage you from going to Jesus. But when you look onto Jesus, then it is the joy from Jesus, Jesus that transforms you and changes you that even your enemy will become your friends at the end. And it says, when you are looking unto Jesus, he is the author, which, is, which means that he is the one who is writing the, the, the path that you are going to go. And it is wonderful. And at the end, he is not only the author, which means that everything that you do shall begin from him, but he is also the one who will help you to finish it, the finisher of our faith. And it says, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured. And it is repeat, it repeated again a second time the word endure, endured the cross and despising shame, which means as well as we follow Jesus, we will endure as well the cross. And we will also despise shame because we, we, we can also face those kind of challenges. And it says, has sat down at the right end of the throne of God. And that is exactly the, the same uh, target of every Christian. Jesus said in Revelations, he who is faithful, I will allow him to sit on my throne. You remember very well that verse which means exactly that whatever Jesus did on earth, we shall also uh, follow it. And as we follow the, the, the message that we have here, we have eight minutes left with us, we can see exactly that that is the purpose of the church. So back into the, the verse that we just read on, 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 on WhatsApp, it says there is a self-denial and there is a sacrifice. And as I repeat it, I will repeat it again. This church is an hospi is a hospital. You cannot look unto people and don't expect that Siri will remain always a wonderful person. There are ups and downs in life. I cannot expect that Michael will, is always at his best when I meet with him. He has his own ups and downs, and the same as well for Judah and Sunai. So uh, the expectation that we have for the church, Jesus is already warning us. There are times where people are so discouraging, but don't look at people. Instead, look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't look at anyone, even if for, for, for Isabel and, and Philip, who will be following the, the recording here, don't look at anyone. Look unto Jesus. You have to follow it, even if with Tumelo. There are times it is difficult, but, but don't look at anyone. Look unto Jesus alone, because when you look at him, the cost will be uh, low, lower than the price that you will get at the end. So there is a cost. Even if it is free, there is a cost. You need to deny yourself and you need to accept the sacrifice. Any comments regarding what we have read there, please? You can comment. You can unmute yourself. I will be showing again the Bible verse. It is a wonderful one. You may unmute yourself if you have any comment. Yes, Michael? Yes, also one should not look unto themselves even. Because you'll mm. disappoint yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You, you, know, you know the Bible speaks of the of of the the flesh and the carnal mind. So you've got those two things going against you, and um, yeah, you you can't even look to yourself. So true. So true. You cannot even look to yourself. That is so true. Judah and Sunai, do you have any one last words to say? None from this side at the moment. Yes, thank you very much. So we are ending here today. The, the, the word that we need to remain with us is look unto the prize. Look unto the prize because Jesus will help us to remain faithful unto him. I would like to request Michael to pray for us today. I would like to request Michael to pray for us today. And also, Sunai, would you please pray for us first, and then Michael will be the second one. The first uh, request that I would like uh, Sunai to pray today is to pray for us to have to find fellowship as we join the church. That was what we learned, fellowship with God and uh, fellowship amongst ourselves. And for Michael, I would like you to pray for us who is follow who are following this message today to remain faithful in the hospital and will not go, go out or will not leave the hospital and until Jesus is coming back and and heal us completely. 
So we are asking Michael to pray for endurance and faithfulness unto the sacrifice and the self-denial that we need to follow. So, so now you can start and then Michael will be ending it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please close your eyes. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for um, the gift of gathering together, Father, to study your word, to hear from you, and to grow in our faith. Thank you that for the great, great blessing of having fellowship with others. Because through others, we learn and we grow and we lift each other up and, and help guide each other through all the trials of life with your, your ultimate guidance, Father. And we're very grateful that we get to have the um, opportunities that we have on your Sabbath day to um, gather together and have fellowship, to, to study your word together, to, um, to um, have rest in, in you, in, in our Lord Jesus Christ, and to do it together, Father. Mm. Please help us um, to always, to not forsake that gathering, Father, Man. because we need... We still need to learn from each other and to learn and grow together. Mm -hmm. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to, to learn more and to, to grow together and also to pray together. Father, I pray that we will endure be faithful and um, we will stay in Christ until the end and that we will abide in Christ and he in us by keeping his commandments as the scripture says that we should do because we cannot do it mm. without, there is no other way. He is the only way to you, Father. And I pray also that we will not try to do it on our own. And Father, when I say we, I, I mean everyone in Pioneer and the body of Christ at large, that you help each and every one of us to always remember that we cannot do this on our own and come to you for help. Father, with the spiritual things and even the, the temporal, physical things of this world, that we will seek your aid and not lean on the arm of flesh, not on our own arm, not on our own strength or might, but by your spirit, but lean on your everlasting arms, Father. And I pray that you'll please help us to, to stay encouraged and let no discouragement cause us to go away from you, but that we will remain faithful to, to you, Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and that we will be faithful to, to one another and to ourselves and remain in love, abiding in your love, Father, as Jesus abided in your love. It will abide in his love. And none of these wonderful things we can do. I mean, it's words, we can pray it, but I pray that you'll help us to change. And first of all, you don't force us. So I ask that you will place a willingness in our hearts to change mm -hmm. and um, that will allow you to change us and be co-workers with you because we can't sit back. We need to work together with you the little bit that we need to do and allow you to change us and in the process, benefit the rest of the body of Christ, um, our brothers and sisters, that we may all grow up into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that each, each, each part of us will, will provide what the other parts of the body needs um, in love for the edification of itself in love. Father, let us not be lazy let us not be afraid let us not be selfish um, but let us minister to one another and be there for one another and continue the great work that you have set before us um, which where we have to be in position to receive and also in position poised to be able to give to others you are great and we thank you for this and I thank you that 
you not only heard this prayer, but that you will do it in your own will and uh, in your own time, according to your own will and in your own time. In Jesus' name, I thank you, and I pray this. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate a lot for, for, for today. Um, I am going to stop the, the recording for now, but uh, we shall meet again by God's grace. I don't know where is the recording gone. <laughs> this one, where is it? Um, just a second, please. Um, why I cannot see it? Hmm. Okay, it's here, finally. Then what, where is it again? Okay, it's here.